Hey, welcome back. So at number four, we are looking at change element attributes, how to change the attributes of an element. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. Okay. So let me go to the index page here. And all I want to do is grab one item from the list. Just one item from the list here. Okay. So I want to grab the very first item. Okay. Now, there's one more way I didn't mention on how to grab items from uh, a list. Now, if something has more than one item inside it, let's say, for example, body. Okay, so body here has three items in there. Now, body has a property uh, just like the properties we saw earlier. Now, that property is called children. So let's take a look at that property there. So I'm going to assign a body into A here. So I'll duplicate this, hold that. Uh, this will not run, only this will run. So what I want is document.body, like that, okay? So in the document, I'm looking for the body, yes? Now I will assign that body to A. And then what do I want? I want us to see, to do a console, dot log for a in this case a is the body of the document so let me refresh here and you see we have that body right now if i click here what i'm looking for is children which is here okay now there's children and there's child nodes now the one we are looking for is children here if I click on it, this is a list. And as you can see, the length of that list is four. Is it? Wait a minute. Yes, the length is four. So there's this item here. One, two, three, four. Now let's come back here and see uh, why there are four items. There's one, there's two, there's three. And this is considered part of the body. So it's number four. So if I look here, you see there's the input, 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 and then there's a script tag. So there are four items in the body of this thing. So this is one way you can use to select items that are inside another item, right? Now, because we've used query selector before uh, in the previous video, let's see how we can use query selector in this case as well. Now, if I put div like so, so I've put all these three inside this div. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to select the children of this uh, without selecting the script tag as well. I just want the inputs. I could have gone and selected them by input or by class name, but I just want to show you how else you can do this. Okay. So here, what I want is to grab the body, but because this is part of the body, I want to put them, I've put them in this container so I can just grab the children of this container and then there will only be three. But how do I grab this item here? Well, if I use a query selector in the body, then I can look for every div, the div that is inside the body. Okay. So, or what I could do is, let me come back here again without changing anything and refresh inside body. So if I look at the children again, the list here, you will see that uh, now there are two items, the children of the, the body. There's a div and then there's a script tag. Okay, so these are no longer children of the body, just this div and the script tag. So now if I say body, children, you see the div is on number zero, right? The script is on number one. So I could say uh, document.body and then I do that and say zero, yes? So what I'm saying here is I'm saying the first item, the first child of the body, because zero is number one. So the first child of the body, I want to grab that and show me that. So let's see that if I refresh. Oh, it's undefined. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, my bad. We're supposed to say the children because we are looking at the children here. So document dot dot body dot children and should child number zero, right? Of the body. So let me refresh. 
and there we get a div okay now the problem with selecting items like this is because if i do add a different uh, item in here let's say i add a span for one reason or another i add a span in there then this div is no longer the first child right so now instead of getting the div i will get the span that's why being very specific when grabbing an item is usually better because regardless how i change my layout i will still uh, be able to grab that item so i was just showing you that this is one way to grab items like this so you can even do a loop through the children of the body and then you're going to loop them loop through them like that but let's be more specific here so i want to add a class name here for us to use i could have added an id no problem i'll add a class name now to differentiate the classes that we are using for styling and those we are using for javascript we usually prefix these classes with js and then a dash and then we give it a name so in this one i want this to be a container so i'll say js container just for some bookkeeping it's just when you look at this you know this is used for javascript to grab this item it's not necessary to do it like this it will work even if i do it like that but you know bookkeeping so what i want to do now is i'm just going to say document dot query selector without the or and then i want to grab an item of class js container like that okay so if i come back here and refresh i get the div so regardless what other items i add here it doesn't matter i will still grab the div because i'm selecting it exactly by name okay so uh what we want to do now is to change some element attributes so I want to grab one item in here and change its elements. So in the same way we've grabbed this one, I would want to create one class here. I will say JS input one, something like this. So this is one of the classes. So I want to grab this particular item, okay? So if I come uh, to here, all I need to change is that. And now A is equal to this. So if I come back and refresh, you see now it's an input. Now I want to change something about this first input. So let's look here for an attribute that we can actually change. So you know that uh, inputs or any uh, HTML element can have styles. So for example, if on the first one I say styles like this, and then I add a background color like that, and this background color is red like so, here is what will happen. So you see it looking red, right? But now let's remove that style. We want to do that using JavaScript. So let me refresh. So I want this to be red. So what do I do? A is equal to that item which I have grabbed, which is this one. So we have the item here. We don't need console.log anymore because we are not logging anything. We just want to do something with A. So let's give it a uh, a more descriptive variable name like input. Okay. So now our input. Now every time you want to access the styles of an input, you say input dot style like that okay so this one what it's saying is the this particular input and the style of that input so this is a child of that so it's the same like i have said before as doing this so input style like that okay so let's see this in action using the dot syntax so say input dot style uh, dot now you want to target a very specific style in our case, it's background color. Now, background color is written like this, right? Background color. But you can't do this in JavaScript because this will cause an error if you did that. So let's just try it and see what error we will get. 
So background color is equal to, and I put in quotes because red is some text. So red like that. So what I've said is I've grabbed the item and shoved it into this variable. Use this variable to call the style on it and then the background color and then change it to red. So of course this is not going to work because we're going to get uncalled syntax error in valid assignment left hand side. So it's talking about that dash then. Now keep in mind that if I had the console closed like this, I wouldn't see anything. I wouldn't know that there's actually an error here. That's why if you see your JavaScript not working, just right click, click inspect element, go to the console and then check if there are any errors there. Okay. So let me come back here and so what we do whenever a, a style has a dash like this, we just remove the dash and put a capital letter there. Like I said, camel case, where there are capital letters throughout to denote different sections or different words. So there's background and there's color. So we just put a capital letter there. So now if I refresh, you see that it's now red. If I write purple here, then that's the color we will get. Bam. Okay. It's not only the background color you can actually change like this. You can change any style at this point. So let me try width here and say width is equal to uh, 400. Don't forget the pixels there, the units. And you see it's gone all over up to there. So that's how you manipulate things in the DOM. Now you can change the ID as well. You can change the class name. We'll see how to add and remove class names, or you can change the type. So let's imagine I want to change the type here. Let me put a value there. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just do this. Instead of style, so I'm not changing the style, I'm just changing the type in this thing. So I'll just say dot type like this is equal to button. I want it to be a button now. So let's come back here and refresh. And you see now it's a button, but we don't have a value for that button. So just say dot value, first change the value to click me and then change it to a button. So refresh, now it's a button, okay? So once I've grabbed this item and put it there, I can use, I can do many, many things to it in a row because I've already grabbed it there. So there's the value, the type. So all the attributes you can add here, even dot ID, for example, I can just say the ID is equal to click me. Or I'll say uh, an ID like this. So if I refresh, if I right click and inspect that particular element, you see that input ID is equal to an ID. So I have actually changed its properties using JavaScript. So in the same way, I can add another style, but keep always remember that when you're adding styles, you have to start with dot style, and then you add the actual style. So the background color will be purple. And then the color now, note here that this is small letter because it's only one word. The color will be white. Oh, my battery is running low. Like that. And now if you come back here and refresh, you see that it has updated. So this is how you change things and manipulate uh, elements, attribute, attributes of elements in JavaScript.